Alright, so there, enough of that. Um, I think we have Monica. Hello. Oh, wait. Wait, Monica, are you there? Yep, hi, oh. can you hear me? Ah, see, I did it again. I didn't turn off the Twitch in the background, and then I heard, like, Skype calling you in the Twitch. It's very confusing and very technical. But that's okay. Um, I need to turn on the game is what I need to do. Mm -hmm. um, which it's on, it just doesn't know that it's there. I need to let it know that it's there. Um, there, that's it, right? Maybe? No? That's not it. Hang on a sec. <laughs> I've got so many windows that are kinda sorta named Legends of Kalasia open on my screen right now that knowing which one is the game is really confusing. Alright, there, that's the game. And as you can see, that's the multiplayer channel. So we are going to play some multiplayer today. And then I had an idea, Monica. So so here's the thing. There's this uh, there's this interview that I have been I'm supposed to have done for the longest yeah. friggin' time and it's it's been like a week and every day Monica's like Chris, can you answer this interview? It's asking questions about your childhood and I don't know it's about your childhood. It's not only a week. It's been there since you were in Boston. <laughs> I know, it's it's really shameful. It's been there a really long time. I haven't done it. And I thought, you know what? Monica could write it if she just knew the answers to the questions, right? Mm -hmm. And then I thought, you know what? I could, if, if you know, Monica was up for it, I could answer the questions here online and then Monica could paraphrase and write it for me. That's, that's a thing we could do, right, Monica? How do I play? <laughs> Fuck you! How do I play? I just sit here and talk the whole time. You don't have to actually write it right now. You can just sort of, you know, write some notes and later on you can clean it up and make it pretty. All right? <laughs> okay. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I gotta fight, you know, my own good fight here of, of, you know. You know what? So, the stream is like doing that thing it was doing last time again. I'm gonna check my settings real quick. Did it, did it, like, did it decide? No, it's still in Singapore where it was. I don't know. I'm gonna. I don't know what to do about that anymore. Like, okay, so now the stream says it doesn't work, right? So, I don't know. Can you see my stream? Yeah. Monica? It's still delayed by a few minutes, but it's not buffering like last time. Well, no, the delay is by definite. The, the delay is by design. It's supposed to delay. That's normal. But, like, it shouldn't buffer. And right now on my screen, it's buffering really hard. Not buffering on mine. Uh, anyway, um, I'll assume... You know what? I bet, I bet if I reload my... my, my, my what, do you, what do you call it? When you, refresh. I bet if I refresh, it's all going to work. That's how I fixed it last time. See? There it is. Now it works. So the problem is actually me. That's the actual real problem. I suck. So anyway, let's get back to the game. So we're going to do two things. I'm going to answer interview questions about myself because that's really fucking egotistical. And two, we're going to play a game. You've okay. got more levels open than me, so why don't you host, Monica? Okay. And let's play a big-ass map. What do we got in big-ass maps? Tolroth and... What's one? Glacier Lands. Merlin is asking you a question, but you refreshed the page so you won't see it. That's true. I refreshed the page. I did not see the question. But you saw the question. You could tell me the question, Monica. Did you go to MJ O'Connor's when you were at PAX? That no. Place was I was so jet-lagged when I was at PAX that, like, and and I, I it, it, PAX was a great show. I was really, it was amazing. Everything was good about it. I got no complaints. But, like, my, it's not a complaint, but my whine is, like, I was at that booth all day explaining that game all day. And, like, when it was done at 6, between the exhaustion and the jet lag, I went back to my hotel and went to sleep. And that was it. That was, like, that was me in Boston. I have a couple pictures of, like, me walking to the train station from PAX. And that's it. That's, like, the extent of my... I don't know. I should go. That that sounds cool. It sounds... sounds Irish. We went to what was the last night I was there. I have some really good friends that run a game studio in Singapore um, called uh, what the hell's the name of their studio? Witching Hour. Witching Hour Games. 
And they've got a game coming out called Masquerada, which is by, which, by the way, huge plug for them. Amazing game. They just uh, knocked it out of the park with like a fifty thousand pound Kickstarter. Um, that sounds cool. That sounds like sexy. A fifty thousand pound Kickstarter, but I meant pound like British pounds. Anyway, um, they took me out to dinner one night, and dinner was really nice because the company was really nice. But somehow I ended up paying sixty dollars for like. A cup of soup and some fish and chips and I kind of got up from the table and I was like holy shit did I did I really just pay 60 bucks for that like I was I was really kind of shocked at the cost but but that was uh... so are we gonna play with random start positions is that what we're gonna do Monica what do you want I'm gonna turn I'm I'm gonna choose a position because we have the option okay. to do that and I'm taking uh, I'm taking the position it told me I'm getting. That's what I'm going to go with. I'm taking that position. You guys can choose other ones if you want. So the other settings are good with it. What? The other settings, AI creep. Starting yeah, they're all good. I'm down okay. with that. I'm ready. Cool. So we're playing with two AIs. No one else is joining. Borderless full screen. I'm not sure what borderless full screen is. Do you know what borderless full screen is? No. <laughs> I would love to know the answer to that question. I am sure that somebody will explain that. Oh, wait, wait. I think in the map, like, you have these wallpaper type borders. Ah, okay. So the reason for the wallpaper type borders is so that you can actually center in on things. Um, I'll, I'll show you here in a minute. There's there's a reason for those borders. If you play uh, oh, Europa Universalis or, or Crusader Kings or any of those games, you'll see they have a border too. Their border is like ugly and gray. We made a pretty border because, you know, I like the pretty. But um, the, the, the reasoning behind the... the well, I should turn my sound on and get some music is what I should do. Hang on a sec. Uh, settings. I have my sound turned like that, which is crazy loud. And my music set like that. Alright, cool. Um, why is my music not on when it's, it says it's on, but I don't hear any music. Woo! Monica makes an alliance. The first alliance is up. Wait, it's when you have the game in window mode, but it looks like it's full screen and you don't actually see the window. We have that! That works! There's a setting. Um, here, the full screen setting, right there. That should give you no little window. If it does, send me a screenshot, because that means there's something broken. Because it's supposed to do... It's supposed to not... It's supposed to... That's not supposed to be a problem. Um, so if your is... If your is... If it is like that, send me a screenshot, because we should be able... It should be... I'm gonna speak, and I'm, my speech is gonna work. That it should work like you want it to work. If you're not being able to get it like that, then we have a bug. Um, are you playing on Mac? Or are you playing on PC? That might be a that would be a useful question. Because um, I can get full screen to work on my screen. I'm not gonna do it right now because like that would God knows what OBS would do if I did that. It, OBS does not like it when I fuck with the settings. Um, so I'm not going to do that right now. But I was in the middle of talking about something. Hmm. Yeah, send me a send me a screenshot if you, if you if you if you can't get it to work, but theoretically if you go here and you go here and then you click the full screen button, which I'm not going to click right now because that would do bad things. It should theoretically work. So if it's not working, uh, we need to chase that down as a bug. Hey Chris, isn't it one turn equals one season? That is correct. Why? Why we're in turn two and it's still spring? Did it start as spring? Yeah. Are you sure it started as spring? Yep. Because I was going to use bumper crop and I was expecting it to be summer. Well, let's let's end turn and see what happens. That's a good question. But it's spring on your screen? It is spring on my screen. Let's see if spring springs.
So, like, twice I've played this game where MJ played as Mordeth, the position I'm in. And so now I always think of this as MJ's spot. So I feel like I'm in huh. MJ's spot. Alright, so now it should change to summer, right? Yep. Hang on, we just gotta finish it. Yep. There is summer. Yeah, I don't know, that's weird. Keep an eye on it and see if it does that again. Okay. I remember when we were playing campaign during my stream. I was I was playing the campaign, Nelson was also playing it on his side. And we forgot to use Winter Harvest. Like, for several turns, we keep me missing out on using Winter Harvest. It happens. Like, I, yeah. I forget to use my bumper crop, like, over and over and over again. It's always, I always see it in autumn. And I'm like, gosh, dang it. <laughs> Did you hear me not cuss there? That was cool, right? <laughs> I, I actually pulled back from the goddammit. Oh, goddammit, I just said it! Fuck, I said it twice! Ooh, I said fuck! <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> my, my little plan to not cuss came to a, a roaring halt in a very quick hurry. That was, I swear to God, that wasn't planned. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't be allowed to have children. I think really there there should be a rule that like I it's it's not right that I have children. They shouldn't be subjected to this. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Woohoo! I have an alliance. <laughs> And the only two people not allied are the two AI. Yep. <laughs> hey, so when, did, when and how did you first become interested in art slash design slash coding? <laughs> well, fascinating that you ask. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow, this, that sounds so weird. When did I first get interested in art code? Well, okay, I've... I've never been interested in coding other than like, you know, a passing. Actually, that's not true. I was a CS major in college for a little bit, but I realized that that was hard and I stopped. Um, coding is tough work. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I got into games as a designer and I got into games as a designer because I used to play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. And actually, you can kind of see it in these maps in this game. Like I, I wanted these maps in the game to look like the old D and D maps from. I, I, there was a there was a D and D world setting that they made. Uh, it was after Greyhawk. It was uh, Forgotten Hello. Realms. Hello. Are you, I'm I'm still here. Is, you, is the multiplayer still on? But, yeah. What, what do you mean? Is it still on? I think I got disconnected. You suck. I'm I'm still very much playing. We're we're still playing without you. Why didn't I get a notification that I can join again? Well, join again. <laughs> I I'm gonna go with shitty Philippine internets would be my bet. Which but is the answer to like half of the questions about things when you work with Filipinos. Like when there's a problem, like the answer is shitty Filipino internets. But that is the I official can't join answer. anymore. What? What do you mean you can't join? I can't join through the multiplayer lobby because the game has already started. But isn't it that if you get dropped because of internet connection, there should be a notification like you, you want to go back or something? It should. It should do that. Why is it mm -hmm. not? I don't know. I didn't get any. Well, now that's sad. Yeah, I've got a little disconnect on your your little thing here. You know what you might try? Quit uh, out of the game and then start the game again and then try to join. Yeah. This game's gonna be no fun if I can't beat up on you, Monica. <laughs> that's that's why I play this game at this point, largely. So yesterday I was playing. I I, I was I was not planning on playing, but uh, I, I just, I, I leave the game on all the time now in case anybody wants to play. And uh, 
like this uh, this guy that I did a <laughs> uh, a long time ago when we started Boom Zap, I didn't have any money to pay anybody. This is a true story. You've heard this story, Monica. Um, mm -hmm. And I needed to pay Ben, one of our artists, and I didn't have any cash. So I went into one of those drug study things where they give you like experimental drugs and you take these experimental drugs for a while and then they test to see what effect they had on you. Um, and I went in for this month-long study for this uh, anti-cancer medication. I think it was anti-cancer. It was some, some heavy-duty drug. Um, so anyway, I, had, I couldn't leave this building for a month. And every day they would shoot you shoot us up full of, you know, some sort of weird chemicals. And they would take a bunch of blood to see how fast the chemicals went into your system. I mean, I, I think they, you know, they, they tell you that they'd tested it before and that it wasn't dangerous. And they were just, you know, checking to see how fast it gets into your blood and that sort of thing. That's That was the story they told us anyway. So anyway, I was there for a month. And that was when I was building Jules of Cleopatra, actually, one of our games. Um, and... I would sit and I would make levels every day, and it, you know, it was kind of cool. And I met this dude there. He was a guy from Russia. He's a really nice guy, and he was also a big gamer. And he was really interested in the fact that I was there at this drug study making games. And he was a cool guy. And so, I, you know, as as you do, I added him to Facebook, and and you know, I've I've kind of more or less kept in touch with him ever since. And. So anyway, he found out about the game, and he's become like a huge fan of the game, and he's also like a very competitive, um, uh, what do you call it? very competitive uh, uh, strategy game player. So anyway, he, he starts poking me yesterday, and he's like, hey, don't you only up for a game? And I'm thinking, you know, okay, I'll go easy on him, because it's my game and shit. And holy crap, that dude trashed me, like, twice hard, embarrassingly, like, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't maintain any dignity whatsoever. The guy just absolutely ganked me time and time again, and it was like three, four games in a row that he didn't just beat me, he spanked me, he embarrassingly spanked me in my own game. And I, I had this worry, actually, that he was going to be there this morning, and then he was going to spank me, you know, in front of everybody at the live stream, but he hasn't shown up yet. Uh, so Monica, are you back in? Yep. Woohoo! It works! Actually, what I did was... No, there was no prompt, so I quit the game, and then when I went back, there was still no prompt. So I decided to spectate. And then it said... The game was dropped. And then I got the... Again. That's very confusing. And yeah. probably not how it's supposed to work. But anyway, back so so yeah. Anyway, so this guy from the drug st pharmacy, the the drug study lab, um, he's he's online. I forget what his online name is. It's Pyro something. And actually, what's funny is somebody reported him to me as a troll, and I was like, he's no troll. He's a friend of mine. He's a cool guy. Um, but what was happening was he was he was so excited about playing the game that he kept asking people like, hey, play a game with me. Play a game with me. Play a game with me. And we don't have any sort of like control in the game to limit how often you can ask people to play a game with you and so it is possible to seem kind of troll like if you don't control that so one of the things we need to talk about later is how do we ensure that people get a reasonable number of ad requests instead of like you know hundreds of ad requests and the other problem was, I guess the ad requests show up down in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, right on top of your end turn button. And so you can't actually, if you're in the middle of a game and somebody's asking you to play a game, it shows up right on top of the end turn button. But I've, I've reported all that to the programmers and we're going to think about how we, we fix that. Um, yeah, so there's that. Wait, I was tell I was going somewhere with this story. There was a, there was a, there was a direction. What was the... Monica, what the fuck was I talking about? I'm not sure I got disconnected. <laughs> That's right. Um. Wait! Your Skype got disconnected? Yep, so it was my internet. You're, you're blaming our game when your Skype went down too? Fuck you! That's your did, shitty Filipino internet! I didn't blame our game! 
I didn't blame the game. I said I was disconnected. Live in a country where the infrastructure is largely duct tape and hamsters, and you're gonna blame our. Speaking of which, it's Philippine election day today, isn't it? Yep. So like, you're not voting. <laughs> you about it. What? I'm not gonna talk about it. What? The election stuff. Well, I, I'm not curious. I'm not going to talk about, like, the candidates. I'm just curious why you're not out voting. I don't want to talk about it either. <laughs> your, your civil duties are being neglected. I wanted to vote. But they won't let you vote? It's complicated. Are you a criminal? Are you, like, nope. a convicted felon? Because no, they're not allowed to vote in the States. Fine, I'll answer the question. I am supposed to vote in the province, but I've been living in Manila for how many years, so I have to prove my residency and stuff. Are you like illegally living in Manila? Are you like officially no. still a resident somewhere? Or? No, it's just that my, my all my documents say that I live in Manila. So vote in Manila. But it was too late then. What do you mean it's too late? You had like years. What do you, you just like put it off and put it off so that, so that what you're saying is this is your fault? No, no, I, I'm, I've been living in Manila for how many years already? But I, even, if, even if I was already in Manila, I voted last elections in the province. All right. Because we still you... have an address there, but then I, I haven't been using that address for documents and stuff. This is very confusing. Hmm. I don't know, like, it seems to me like every time you touch a, a document in the Philippines, it's like an issue. Like, like, something that in, in Singapore or Japan, it'd be like, uh, oh yeah, you need to walk down to the office, it'll take like half an hour. That's like a week-long odyssey in the Philippines. Always. And the only way to make it less than a week-long odyssey is you've got to give somebody some money. And even then, it's still like a couple days. I'm pretty much right in this, right? Hmm, I think so. Hmm. I should quit talking shit about the Philippines, though. <laughs> I love the Philippines. You're good people. Alright, so... What was the question? There was a question I was supposed to answer, because we're supposed to get this silly interview thing, because... And I swear I'm not doing this because I'm like big-headed and egotistical. Like somebody actually, uh, this is getting printed somewhere, and I don't have time to answer it. So I'm making Monica do it. So that's why we're answering these questions. They're not like, this is not like me being like, let, let's let me talk about me, in the, because like I know I'm not interesting. But like somebody, I don't have time to do this shit because I got a game to build. So that's that's the reasoning behind this. So anyway, what was the question, Monica? We had questions. When, when and how did you become first interested in art or design or coding? Well, I mean, the, the real answer to that is I'm interested in design, and I got into games through design. And I got into design largely from being a uh, dungeon master in a D&D &D group. And I used to go to... Um, here, I'm going to drop some names. For, for people who are old and remember, um, there used to be a game company called Origin. They did... Uh, oh, goodness. They did Wing Commander and Privateer... Um, most people know him because of Ultima, I think. And I didn't, I didn't work there, but I had a bunch of friends that did. And we used to go play Dungeons and Dragons at the Origin offices every day. Well, not every day, every week. We used to go play on Wednesday nights. And we would use their like conference room as a place to hang out and, and play our games. And then the the core group that I used to play with, they were actually the like the producer and a bunch of guys from the, the like the assistant producer and I forget what else from the privateer team. None of you people remember privateer. It was a really cool space fighting game back in the day. Um, if you're old, you would be impressed by that. So anyway, we used to go and, and hang out and and the guys that used to be in the privateer team, they broke off to go start their own game company. What? I attacked and it didn't happen? Why did that... Oh, somebody played a sphere of don't fuck with me or something like that, didn't they? Um, so, 
yeah, so I used to go do that, and when they broke off to go start their own company, I used to go hang out with them at their company, and they were like, you know, it was weird because, like, now they had their own company, and I was going and hanging out at their company, but I didn't work for them. And they were like, yeah, this is weird. You should work for us because you're our dungeon master. And so I got a job working with them as a level designer. And that was my that was my first job. That's how I got into the game industry. Blatant and brutal nepotism. So, hmm. yeah, there we go. That. Uh, hi, Centara. Hi, Dizzy Disaster. Hi, all these people that are showing up in our stream. This is cool. Real live humans in the stream. Who knew? Fun-filled hmm. stuff. So does that answer your question, Monica? Is that can you build something out of that? Yep. I I think I already know that story. I know, I've told it a dozen times. Yep, but I didn't know it was the answer to that specific question. Alright, cool. So that so you can <laughs> you can write something out of that, right? This is a good fight. I think I'm gonna get my ass kicked in it. But that's alright, because I brought a lot of treants. <laughs> Who are you fighting? Um, I am I am getting my ass whipped by Merlini X Merlini. right now. <laughs> there's this there's this one spot. Oh god damn it! MJ didn't do this. MJ was gonna fix this map because this castle is right next to this tower, and I was ah. bitching about that in one of our earlier games, and we were gonna change that, and then he didn't because he sucks, and now it's right back where it used to be, which is sad. But that's all right. I'm still, I, I still love MJ. He's a good kid, MJ. He's, he, he's out voting today, right? Yep. It's not really a card game. It's more like there's cards, but the cards are, they were actually, this, this game existed a long time before we even had cards in it. The cards were added quite late. Um, the idea is it's more like, uh, I don't know, like a Heroes of Might and Magic meets Risk kind of thing. So the, the, the main bit of the game is, um, and excuse me to those of you who already know it, but somebody did ask. Um, the, the, the main idea of the game is, it's, it's you got these heroes, like uh, this CRISPR, by the way, he's named after me, he's a bear. Um, and the heroes move around this uh, map, and they have little armies full of units like this Treant or uh, etc. And the, the, the sort of kicker to the game is there's a planning cycle and a resolution cycle. So right now you're seeing the resolution cycle. So you're seeing everyone's move is being resolved. All the stuff that we said we were going to do, now we're doing, right? Um, why does the ceasefire not show up there? Oh, did I get... I got to the death tier, didn't I? No, I didn't. No, that ceasefire is just not showing up. That's a bug. Can you write that down, Monica? Okay. Um... So yeah, so now all the turns resolved, and so now we're going to get into the planning phase. In the planning phase, we decide where everybody goes. Um, the cards are there sort of as a, a, a bonus. They're kind of like a special activity that the players can do. You know what I should have done? I should have left one hero there to take the damage, because now he's going to get to use all of his gold and build up a bunch more crap. So I've, I've done a bad thing. I've, I've been foolish in my planning. Um, but that's alright, because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still happy with my... I'm still pleased to be me. I'm still a good man. I don't, I'm not ashamed of who I am. Let's see, let's get a bunch more treants. You never have enough treants. Really, you just, you just gotta lump on the treants. They gotta come along and do a lot of dying for you. That's, that's what they're there for. Alright, so you're gonna go over there. You're gonna go over there. And you are going to do that and build me a ooh, build me one of those. Um Is it God damn it, I forgot to use my bumper crop again. It was time <laughs> and I didn't. I feel silly. Uh, Alicat is asking, why the decision to add the extra random element of cards into the game? So the idea behind the okay, that's a good. That's actually a very nice question. Um, the this we were playing the game when, before we had the cards, and the problem was the game became very deterministic. It was very clear that you know, all right, I've got this army, you've got that army. I know how this is going to play out, and it became sort of like every combat you kind of knew how the combat was going to go, 
and that kind of ruined it a little bit for the, for the game. The game got, I don't want to say boring, but it was, it was too easy to predict. Um, and what I wanted was I, the, the cards were actually my idea. Um, I wanted the idea to have the player be able to do something surprising that would change the odds that I didn't expect because we have this uh, we have this resolution cycle and during the resolution cycle that's when like I find out what it is you did right and I wanted during that time where I find out what you did I wanted there to be something new and different and special there and so that that was the idea behind the cards um, whether or not it, it works or it's cool I don't know I, it seems to work pretty well um, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, yeah, so w I wanted to have the idea that, like, you know, alright, you didn't expect me to have this extra card that gives me a double attack or a blah 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 And when I play that card, it changes up the odds in the battle, and there's sort of more surprising results. And I, I'm actually pretty pleased with how that came out. I think it actually ended up working exactly... It, it, as a designer, you make a lot of design decisions where you think this thing is going to do this thing, and then it ends up that that thing doesn't do anything like what you thought it was going to do. That Sadly, that happens a lot. Um, and in this case, this was one of the few times that I, I made a very conscious design decision and then was like, yeah, that, that actually pretty much did exactly what I wanted it to. That's cool. So that was cool. I was pretty happy with that. Um, I, the, the only sort of downside to it that I've found is when people see our game, they immediately think we're a card game. And, you know, because the cards are they're, they're very visual down there in the bottom corner, and you think, oh, it's a card game. I don't like card games. Which is sad because it's it's not really a card game in any meaningful sense. It's a it's a game that has you know special cards. Oh, see that's the thing about the cards and the resolution, right? So I was I had that guy. He was going to come help out in that battle, and then Merlini X threw down a misdirection card and sent my guy in a different direction and totally fucked me, right? Like that was a that was a good play, and that's exactly what I'm talking about with the cards. That's exactly what we wanted to happen that I, I, I thought I knew what was going to happen, I thought I knew how this was going to play out, but he had this tactical decision that he could make that would change the odds. And actually, because he did that, he just killed one of my heroes. I've got one hero that's down to one unit. Uh, yeah, that, that was a, that was a game-changing card play. And a very good one, right? Um, and so that's, that's the kind of thing that we were hoping to get with the cards, and, you know, we did get. So that's cool. So I'm, ex I'm excited about that. Um, I have to think for a minute, because things are looking bad for me. Uh, <laughs> I, think I, I think I just got smacked pretty hard, is what happened. And I've got this huge army waiting there. Um, yeah, alright. Um, yeah, that kind of sucked. Um... I would blame that on the fact that I'm talking and I'm distracted, but that would be just a lie, actually. He's just playing better than me. <laughs> um, so, so well done on that. Yeah, 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 that's exactly it. Um, you know, you've got sort of a trump card that you can throw down and be like, you know, yeah, you thought you were going to win this battle, but, baha, I did this thing. But it's not always just a, you know, double your attack. There's a lot of different cards. There's cards that, um, that misdirection card that force somebody to go somewhere else, or a lost card that lets somebody uh, not take a turn this turn, or... I forget, there's... And one of the nice things about the cards um, that's maybe not apparent from just watching the game play out, um, you can see the cards have different colors. Um, the gray cards are cards that anybody can have. The yellow cards are actually merchant cards. You can see it says they're merchant. And each one of the different characters have a class. So Rana here, this freaky owl thing, he's he's a merchant, right? Um, and he has a special ability too, but that merchant thing means that he gets certain cards. So you can see, if you're a merchant and you're Feyborn, you get this cool Winter Harvest card. But if you're a merchant, you also get these cards, which all merchants, regardless of race, get. Um, and so 
there's actually kind of sort of a little bit of a deck building aspect to the game where you're kind of figuring out you know which hero do I want to get because that hero gets me you know this card and that card could be played well you know you're kind of figuring out a little bit how you god damn it I have two bumper crops and I forgot to play them last <laughs> turn because I got distracted um, the bumper crop for instance is a card that gives you three times as much gold um, which is a damn good thing um, and I could really use some gold right now and you're not really sp the bumper crops are really better played in the summer when you get more resources I'm gonna play them right now because I am really hard up for gold um, yeah wait you defend um, but yeah that's the, that's the idea behind the cards and and it it comes out really nice it creates a, 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 a fun set of tactical decisions that are just beyond build army move army build army move army which is what it usually ends up being Yeah, that. That was that was a really long answer to your question, and I, I apologize. But, you know, I got nothing but time. It's a live stream. <laughs> I got time to burn. Speaking of time to burn, Monica, do you have any other fun interview questions? <laughs> In a way, I still get that bonus even if I run out of time to press enter. All right, can you put that down as a bug? Uh, there's a we've got that list that I've been keeping. Um, you know, I wish I could agree with you on that, but I've never played Company of Heroes or War War Game Air Land Battle, um, so your statement may be completely correct. I just can't validate it because I don't have the information that I would need to. I don't know. Have you played those games, Monica? No. Nope. See, Monica's actually our marketing manager, but she's also like a serious gamer. And I, I think like the problem is when you when you have a title like marketing manager, everyone assumes like, you know, oh, she's just the marketing person. But actually, Monica, you're like a pretty serious gamer, right? I think so. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 that's your humility showing. It, you're you probably honestly, Monica probably spends more time a week playing games than I do. That's probably a true statement. Hmm. Ah! I knew he was going to attack. There's really not much I can do about that. Hang in there, guys. Oh! Hey! I. You know, it's funny. You had a whole thing yesterday where you were talking about how to pronounce P-I-G-E. And it's not pig. It's P-G-A-Y. Or... I forget, you had a whole thing where you talk about it and you pronounce it like 10 different ways and I don't remember how to pronounce it now. And now I feel stupid. I was there. I was there for the pronunciation lesson and now I don't know. All right. So, Alara Shade, now would be a prime opportunity to come down and help your ally. Now would be the moment. <laughs> no, she's busy. You're never too AI. busy to come <laughs> help your ally who's about to have his only hero and only castle destroyed. It's never... You're never too busy for that. <laughs> There's always time for that. Have you done that for your allies? Can I not answer that question? <laughs> Can you ask another question? Okay, what is your creative process like? Where do you begin? Wait, wait, wait. Um, I'm going to answer the, the stream questions before your questions. Oh, sure. Uh, the question being, what made you decide to go the Heroes of Might and Magic route instead of the Master of Magic route? Um, so when, when we started this, there, there's a history to this game. Um, believe it or not, before this game was made, it was a totally different game. Um, I had this dream that I've always wanted to make a trading simulator. Um, and I love the history of colonial Southeast Asia. I think that's just a fascinating period of history. And I wanted to make a Southeast Asian sort of Taipan style, you know, opium traders and whatnot uh, trading game with, you know, ships and things like that. And when I when when we started that I was really dead set on it's all about the trading it's not a combat game it's all about the trading 
Oh, hang in there. Hang in there, my little hero. Um, and we made it. We actually built this game. You could drive ships around, and, and it was it was actually a quite extensive game that we had put together um, that was absolutely no fun. And I played it and played it and played it, and we kept changing it. We spent at least nine, ten months fucking around with it, trying to make this thing fun. And we could never get it to be fun. And we were like, God damn, what do we do? And so I actually stopped the game, and I pulled the team aside, and I said, All right, team, we're not going to make this game anymore. I'm not going to waste any more money trying to make this game fun. What sucks in this game is there's no combat. And we, we need actual real combat in our game. So, I want you, and I, this, is, this was the directions I gave the team, I said I want you to go away and take the engine that we've put together, the sort of strategy based engine that we have and the tools that we have, um, and using those tools make something that has actual combat, that's an actual strategy game. And at the time, the, the, uh, we had a couple designers that aren't with us anymore, uh, really, really great uh, uh, young ladies from, one was in Malaysia, one was in uh, Manila, uh, a girl named Sam and a, a girl named TG, and they went away and they were both huge Heroes of Might and Magic fans. And so they basically said, you know, we want to make Heroes of Might and Magic. Um, but, you know, obviously we can't just make Heroes of Might and Magic, we have to, you know, do something kind of original too. And so they came up with this sort of weird Heroes of Might and Magic hybrid. Um, and you can see, you know, the heart of this game, the very sort of basic concept of the game, it pulls a lot from uh, Risk, actually. If you ever, obviously, you know, you've played Risk. Um, where there's, you know, there's territories, there's units that move from territory to territory, you take over territories to get gold, you use the gold to buy units, you use the units to take over territories to get more gold. It's a, you know, it's a pretty straightforward uh, way to build a game. Um, and we kind of built it up, and it was immediately, without any work at all, more fun than our trading game ever was. And... I was just in love with it. I was like, this idea that, and, and this game, it, it, you know, I talk about this game a lot like it was my idea. It, it wasn't. The, the original kernel of this game was actually designed by uh, two young ladies from Southeast Asia, Sam and TG. Uh, but neither one of them worked for the studio anymore. They had, uh, for reasons of their own, they've moved on to other things, but we've kept building the game after them. And this is what we've come up with. And so, yeah, it does have a very Heroes of Might and Magic feel to it. Um, Another thing that, that was kind of important when we built it was our history as a game development studio. Um, we, we used to make a lot of hidden object games. And I don't know if you guys have ever played hidden object games, but they're these uh, sort of, you, uh, I don't know, you look at a scene and there's a bunch of crap in the scene and it tells you to find stuff. And we were actually pretty famous for being a hidden object game developer. We were one of the, the larger, in that in that sort of small world of hidden object games, we were a big deal. Um, and so, we had developed an art style, and the art style was making the sort of, not realistic, but fantastical looking, detailed characters and scenes. We were good at that. We had a bunch of artists that could do that very well. And when we decided to make the game, we, you know, it, it, there were a lot of different ways we could go, but we, we said, you know what, we know how to do this, we do, we do this well, we should use those skills. And so that's why we made a game with all of this character art. You know, when you click on any one of the units, you know, you, you, you see the cards, have this, you know, beautiful art in it. You click on the the heroes, and the heroes have this, you know, incredibly good art. That's not one of our stronger heroes, but um, you know, all of these all of these interesting characters and all this beautiful character art. It's just something that our studio happened to be good at, and so we decided that we would kind of stick with our strengths. Um, and I, I think it was a good call. I'm I'm very pleased with that decision, and I'm very pleased with the results that we we came with from it. So. So yeah, that. 
Um, yeah, you know, the thing is, um, sometimes you gotta scrap a game. That you, you know, the, the, the thing is, you, you want it to be good. And, you know, it's your baby, and you love it, and you work on it, and it's your dream, and you just think, God, this is, if I just do this thing, or I do that thing, it's going to magically be better. But the, the truth of game development is, a shit idea is a shit idea. And it doesn't matter how much you gussy up your shit idea and add some extra features to it, or, or, um, or whatnot, uh... You're never gonna you're never gonna make it better by making you know, if if the core design is not good if the core idea behind the game and and let's be honest the trading game was totally my idea I take total fault for that that was not like the team fucked up that was totally me um, oh I'm getting my ass whipped um, if the core idea isn't good it doesn't matter how much work you put into it or how much art you add to it or how many features you add it's just never gonna be good and that that was quite honestly what happened we had a game that wasn't good and there wasn't anything I could do to make it better um, oh my god Nelson's pictures on there uh, let me fix that actually um, let's see I need to yeah so I need to remove Nelson and I need to add Monica there that's better done alright back to my game Is it at all sexist for me to say that Monica's prettier than Nelson? Because that just seems like a fact, right? That doesn't seem sexist to me. That just seems like... Uh, you don't even, even have to without, be... Even without comparing it to me, you always say Nelson's not pretty. He's just not a pretty guy. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I love Nelson. He's good people, but he's just not pretty. You know? And, and I feel for him. He's got to go through his whole life being not pretty. <laughs> Oh my god, two hours and 99 turns for the first campaign. That is actually a very long time. You are you are setting records. Um, yeah, I'm getting my ass handed to me here by Merlini X. Maybe if I had an ally that would put some pressure on him instead of just quietly winning the game hey, on her own. Hey, has been tough to beat. She's, no, I, I see what she's doing. She's 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 got her own game going on up there. She's 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 I can't I can't I can't complain. She's playing intelligently, but she is letting her ally, you know, get ass whipped as part of her strategy, which, you know, I I can't support that. What? And then Alara will break her ally, and then the two of them will become allies. No, I think what I think the two of them want a, don't want to share their victory. I think that. <laughs> whoa! 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 No, that's not right. That's just not okay. That's. Oh my god! Oh my god! That they planned this from the beginning. This this was definitely in the cards from the very beginning. They just allied with us so that we won't attack their kingdoms. Oh! Oh! That's brutal. That's some backstabbing bullshit right there. <laughs> hey, Chris, wanna be allies? Allies! It doesn't matter. We're still gonna lose, but sure. Dude, That's look at that. Out. Look, this is brutal. She waited until she was right on the border. Broker alliance with me, allied with the guy that's sitting on top of my castle. Ah, 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 ah! That's friends, just wrong. You know. Oh, I cry foul. That's it. I'm never allying with her again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it. I'm out of the game. I got no heroes and no city, so there's not much I can do here. <laughs> I have to say that was well played. I I can't I can't. As 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 upset as I am, I have to say that was some good playing. 
Ah. Oh. All right, Monica, you got to you got to stand up for us. <laughs> I don't I don't know if you can win this, Monica. I don't know either. Let's see. 900 points to victory. See, if they wanted to win, he would not take over that castle. He would actually leave that castle and he would let Alara take that castle. I shouldn't be telling you this, but... Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! The pain! The pain! <laughs> Oh, I thought we were going to put a, a, a spectate button there. Now i got to go multiplayer spectate. Alright. Let's see. Join Glacierlands. Let's spectate in. I'm going to go look at this campaign screenshot. Oh my god. You have so much gold in that campaign and you don't have nearly as many troops as you could have. You got to you got to build more troops. All right. Um wow, the ass whipping was that was a that was a tactical brutal surgical ass whipping that I got there. No, I don't believe that this is Alara's first time to play the game. I am 100% certain this is not Alara's first time to play the game. Ah, ah. All right, so like, all right, so I don't know what is what is streamer etiquette, right? So like, I'm in a multiplayer game. I'm the streamer. I'm out, right? Do I spectate until the game is over? Do I start a new game? What is what is streamer etiquette at this moment? I have like four streamers in this in the in the channel right now. What what is the appropriate streamer etiquette for you got your ass whipped? This is literally your second game. Beginner's luck. All right, so what needs to happen? No, I think she's just good at games. <laughs> <laughs> My money is on she's good at games. Um Yeah, you need to go give Renegade some lessons is what needs to happen, right? Cuz your your second game and his second game are two very different games. <laughs> oh. No, I, I, I can find no fault with this, this gameplay. Uh, I am going to lose. Yeah, you do suck, Renegade. I'm I'm sorry. I shouldn't I shouldn't say that, but yeah well let me let me rephrase. Compared to Alara Shade, you suck. And that could be because you're average and she's awesome, or she's average and you suck. One of those two. Or actually, there is the she's awesome and you suck. That's also a possibility. So those are the three. But on a on a scale reference, we have her and you. And you could kind of adjust that scale however you want. I don't know. Can you I don't think you can win this, Monica. I don't yeah, I don't see lose. any flow of events by which you win. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see any, I don't see any path to victory. <laughs> You're like the Bernie Sanders of this game. <laughs> yeah, so that would make Alara Hillary, and that would make Merlini X Trump, actually. And I think that makes me Ted Cruz, if you put it all together. I think that's how this game played out. I'm the Ted Cruz of the, which I am from Texas, so, you know. But I'm not a crazy racist that I'm aware of. I'm kind of racist. I don't know. Am I racist, Monica? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we, we've decided I'm a racist. <laughs> yeah, he's got that big 48 army sitting on your fortress. You've got nobody in your castle. All your heroes are dead. Yeah, I don't... I don't see any path to victory here. Hey, the other day I... I... <laughs> That's exactly right, Renegade. That is exactly right. <laughs> hey, the other day I had no castle. 
hero and I survived and beat you. Yeah, but that's not gonna happen this time. <laughs> that's that, that's you can live in those glory days if you want, <laughs> and you can believe that life is good like that. But no, that that it is well and truly over for you. This is shameful. This is like it's been so long since I've won a game of my own game, <laughs> and I'm starting to really get bitter about it. Last night I was I was playing and I was like I was saying before I was getting my ass whipped by that guy from the medical research facility. That's a cool sentence. I was getting my ass whipped by that guy from the medical research facility. I like that I can throw that sentence out and it's true. But and I was getting like I was getting really frustrated. And my wife walks in and she's like, "What is there something wrong?" And I'm like, "I'm losing my game again." And she's like, "You're 12, aren't you? You're like a fucking 12 year old." Which, really, I am. As a game developer, like, deep inside, I think I'm still basically a fucking 12-year-old. So, yeah, there's that. Um, yeah, you're, you're, you're toast, Monica. There's no hope. Merlini X is... Uh, basically, the only question now is... Does Alara get her extra couple points, break her alliance, and take the victory by herself? That's the, that's the real question. And... And from her her history of backstabbing, I would say the odds are very high. I would say the, the odds of a another brutal backstab are, are quite good. Wow, Monica's really big on my screen. I'm gonna make her smaller. Make her head the same size as my head. There. Now wait, because your head was really big a second ago. See, I've been playing around with what the best position to put because like Renegade had him down here. And that hides the cards, but that seems maybe a better position. I don't know. Like, I can't figure out where where I should put myself. That's kind of a nice spot there, sort of. I need to get a green screen, but I'm not really, I'm not, like, streamer enough for a green screen. Alright, let's see. Does, does it play out? Does it, does it work that she's going to break the alliance and take the take the solo victory or is she going to go for the allied victory that's the question hmm let's see oh in spectator mode there's i can see the numbers on everything that's cool oh yeah 15 phoenixes she's got you wrecked yeah you're dead down there um Wait. Yeah, all right. You know what's even more embarrassing, Monica? What? She kicked our ass with the Revenant. And yeah, we, I noticed. And we know the Revenant is the shit that, like, we, we actually need to go in and fix this game because the Revenant is a little bit underpowered. Like, we actually have to do that. So my thoughts on the genre change. So we got out a hidden object for a very good reason. Um, they got too expensive to make. The thing with hidden object games was they, they make a certain amount of money and no, it's not bad. It's that you're playing with the shittiest force and you still kicked our ass, which again goes to the you're apparently good at games argument. So anyway, back to the story. Um, we were making hidden object games, and like when we started making them, you could just like you just put a screen with some shit on it and say like you know click on the stuff, and it was it was like they were happy with that. But over time, they wanted like stories, and they wanted videos, and they wanted longer game and more game, and you know it used to cost us you know uh, X to make a game. Well, I'll use real numbers. I don't have to hide real numbers. So it used to cost us like you know fifty thousand dollars to make a game that we would make you know, $180,000 on. So, shit, you do that all day, right? So we made a bunch of those. And the price started going up because they wanted more and more and more stuff and we had to hire more animators and hire more people and suddenly we was costing 110, 120, 150, $180,000 to make these games. And we weren't seeing that the revenue was going up at the same rate. And as much, I actually really liked making hidden object games because you got to write a little story and uh, I thought the Awakening series was a great series. You should go play it. It's good stuff. Um, if you go look on our website, you can see all of our hidden object games. They're good games if you like hidden object games. Um, 
And, you know, I think a lot of gamers kind of poo-poo them and say, like, oh, those aren't real games. But I actually really enjoyed making them. I, I had a good time doing it. It's just at some point, they weren't profitable anymore. And we actually originally I'm shifted <laughs> to doing... Um, we did uh, free-to-play games. Uh, we did a free-to-play uh, match game. We did a free-to-play sort of Clash of Clans looking thing that I ended up canceling. Uh, we did a free-to-play sort of heyday looking thing. And I'll be really frank. I fucking hated it. I hated making free-to-play games. I just did not enjoy it at all. And I found that I wasn't even playing the games that we were making. I was just kind of letting the teams build them because I didn't give a shit. Ah! Oh, all right. I demand a rematch. Monica, set it up. Let's play another game. Okay. Um, let's play a different map, though. Hey, Renegade is in the chat. Hey, Ben wants to play. All right, so let's... I'm going to take, like, a couple minutes to answer this question, and while I take a couple minutes to answer this question, anyone who wants to get in the next game, I'm sitting in the multiplayer chat. Uh, hop in. Uh, Monica's going to set up a game. So, yeah, so I hated Bacon Free to Play games, and I, I'm i a huge Crusader Kings fan, I'm a huge Civilization fan, and I was like, let's make one. Let's make something like that. Let's. I've been making games for 25 years, I've never made a strategy game, and the games that I play are strategy games. And I just felt like it's it's time to make a game that you, you want to make. And so financially ask me again in like two months after we release the game and we see how much money I lost um, this was not a cheap game to build it was quite expensive it took quite a lot of work I mean there's you know there's there's a lot of stuff in this that you may not actually think about like all of the server architecture for being online um, I don't know if you know this, the game is also available, it's not, we don't have it released yet, but it's playable, and we were showing it at PAX, it's totally playable on uh, Android and on iOS, and getting all of that to work together with everything, I mean it was a, a hell of a lot of work went into this game, um, it was quite expensive, and it's going to take a lot of game sales to make up that, to be very frank. Um, we're going to have to sell a lot of games or I lost a lot of money and BoomZap is not I think people have a wrong idea about game developers and what it's like to be a game developer like you know we're in some sort of uh, rich world you can see behind me this is my this is my home office it's you know it's I'm in a I'm in a little four bedroom apartment in, in Tokyo I, I'm not rich I don't even own a car um, we're not rich people, and we we made a decision, you know, me personally, I made a decision that, that I wanted to make games for a living, and that's what I wanted my life to be like, and we make a lot of sacrifices for that decision. Uh, I could probably make a lot more money if I went and got a job at Google or Amazon or something like that, but I've, I've made the decision to do uh, this with my life, and... Yeah, it's a struggle. It's a it's a real struggle. Um, and you take a game like this and, you know, let's for a minute assume it doesn't do well, right? I can tell you right now, this game probably cost, uh, shit, I, I don't know, you have to figure out how much I should have paid myself. I haven't paid myself anything in quite a while. Um, probably well over $200,000 to make this game. So... You know, because we're 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 a real studio. Like people like Monica and and the programmer and everyone, they they all got paid, right? They don't. You know, this isn't like we all work in a garage somewhere and 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 we hope that we'll make money someday. The only people who aren't getting paid are the two founders of the studio, myself and uh, my business partner Alan Simonson. He's a really great guy. He's the the code half of our company. Um, we haven't been paid in a really long time, but everyone else got paid because we're. You know, we believe in paying people a fair wage. We believe in, in taking care of our staff. So, yeah, I've put well over $200,000 into this game. You can do the math. If we sell it at, you know, $20 a copy, $25 a copy, 
Uh, Steam takes its cut, Apple takes its cut, Google takes their cut, you know, in any one of those cases, that's 30% off the top. So that's, you know, if we sell it at a full price of 20 bucks and you take 30% off 20 bucks, that's what, six bucks? So, or 30% off 25, it puts us down to like $19 a game. Even if you rounded that up to 20, to get to $200,000, you gotta sell a lot of games. Um, that's, that's the reality. And, you know, you can make games on a lot less money, uh, but you can't make a game that looks like this on a lot less money. That's that's the reality of, of game development. If you want to pay your staff. Um, and, and there are people out there who are on Steam who are, you know, four or five people that just started their own company and they got some other part-time job or something. Um, maybe that's how their life is and maybe they can do this longer. But if, if you're actually you know, paying people. Yeah. So there's that. Alright, so back to the game. Um, I didn't get to be yellow. Friggin' Ben, you took yellow from me? Why? You don't even care. Why do you take that from me? Your little shield isn't even yellow, bastard. Alright. No, yeah, so if you put your game up on Steam, if you put your game on the iTunes store, if you put your game on the Google Play store, um... Oh, the Ben Monica Alliance! Already, huh? You know what? I'm not, I'm not allying with anybody. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't trust them anymore. Uh, I didn't have a choice. There's nobody to ally with anymore anyway. Uh, Maybe, maybe the AI will ally with me. Hey, AI. Where's AI? Oh, orange is AI. Okay. Wait. Come on, AI. Be my friend. You won't backstab me. The only one I can trust is the AI. Um... Yeah, no, so if you if you if you make a game with and, and put it on any of those distribution channels, uh, yeah, you're looking at they take thirty percent right off the top, every sale. And and I you know, I am not saying that to complain. I mean they, they do earn that thirty percent. They you know, they find an audience and they run a distribution site and you know, Steam does quite a lot of stuff. I don't I don't resent their thirty percent, but that's math you have to do when you you know when you say I I, I earn twenty dollars for you know right now we're in early access so the game's fifteen bucks well we don't see fifteen bucks when you pay fifteen bucks for the game I see fifteen bucks minus what four fifty so I see eleven and a half dollars um, it takes a lot of eleven and a half dollars is to get up to two hundred thousand dollars that's again the reality that we live in and you just have to. But I mean, I'm not complaining. That's I mean, I I know it sounds like I'm whining, but I mean that's that's you know, people ask. That's what game development is, and I I think people miss that part of understanding game developers' lives, and and especially in the case of a little independent studio like ours, um, yeah, that money's all me, and Alan. I mean, you know, so. If you if you imagine that two hundred thousand dollars, that's that's literally a hundred thousand dollars of mine, right? So imagine, you know, my father has a house in. I'm from Texas originally, right outside of Dallas, and my father has a house outside of uh, Azle, Texas, out in the country. It's a lake house. It's got a it's got a, a dock and a place to park a boat and a big four car garage up on the hill. And the whole damn thing, uh, garage and dock and everything, I think he paid $220,000, something like that for it. So, I mean, it's like I owned that house and just, like, set fire to it, you know? Woof! All right, that house is gone if we don't make any money. I mean, that's, that's literally, you know, Alan and I bought a house in Texas and set fire to it. That's what a failing game means to a small indie game developer like us. And so, yeah, you know, the the you greedy developers, you're taking it... Sometimes I get a little, you know, hot under the collar about when people talk like that. But but I also realize that it's 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 not them being bad people. It's it's just they don't they don't get it. They don't understand. Um The way the game industry actually works though is 
we take all of that risk. And I've only told you about the bad side. Now, there is a good side, right? Um, a very good friend of mine, uh, a guy named Matthew Hall, uh, he was, he's an Australian guy, and he did a bunch of games that you've never heard of. Uh, Tiny Things, and uh, I forget a couple, but he, he was working for years and years making games that, that honestly you've never heard of. And then uh, about 18 months ago, he made a game that you have heard of called Crossy Road. And holy shit, Matt made a lot of money. I mean, there's no getting around it. Matt made a metric fuck ton of money out of that. And, and more power to him. He's a good guy. He deserved every bit of it. But that's the industry, right? You either lose your money, all of it, or you make a lot of money. The, the middle ground where you just can consistently sort of make games and make enough money to make another game, that world is actually a very small world. There's very few people that live in that world. And as it's gotten easier and easier to make games, that's gotten even worse um, because anybody can make a game right now. I mean, if, if you put your mind to it, it, it's quite easy to be a game developer. Let, let me rephrase that. It's quite easy to develop a game. Um, you can go get a copy of Unity if you've got some, some reasonably decent coding skills and a couple friends who are artists. You've got a pretty good shot at being a game developer if, if you want to be. And because of that, if you look at the App Store, there are, and I'm not exaggerating, this is a real number, there's over 500 games put on the Apple App Store every week. I'll say that again in case you didn't hear it. 500 games every week. Um, now admittedly, 90% of them are bullshit. They're, you know, my first Tetris game or some shit like that, but even if you just take 10% of that, that's still 50 solid good games up on the App Store every week. And you've got to somehow rise above that. You've got to convince somebody, hey, don't don't play those other 50 games. Play my game. You know? Know about my game. Give a shit about my game. Know that we exist. And that's, uh, to be honest, a, a huge struggle. Um, the Steam, the Steam world is a little bit better. Um, it's not 300 or 500 games a week, it's, but it's still quite a few games a week. I don't know the actual numbers, but it's, it's still a, a larger number than I would like it to be. Um, and we fight that. Why, thanks, Alara. Um... Honestly, I, I I think part of what's nice about this game is when most people think strategy games, and this was something that I thought about a lot as we built it. Um, when I gave the original remit to the team and told them what kind of game to go make, um, uh, but I, I, I was very clear that I want to be able to play it on an iPad, and I want to be able to play a whole game in an hour, an hour and a half. And, and that was that was for very personal reasons. I'm I'm a huge game fan. I, I love strategy games. I play you know, I, I've got hundreds and hundreds of hours booked in Crusader Kings. I played Civ. I've played every Civ from one to five. I don't know how many hours, but I just don't. I can't. I don't have time for that anymore. I I work. I have kids. I got shit to do, and those games are like a full time job, and so. I think a lot of people get into this game because it doesn't have all the little tiny twiddly bits. It doesn't have, you know, I need to, every turn takes a half hour of me adjusting little numbers and you can actually kind of get into it and get out of it in a reasonable amount of time. And it, you know, I, I, I had thought that I would spend more time playing it, um, on the iPad. I, I originally thought that this was going to be all about iPad and PC was almost a almost an afterthought when we started building it but the more we built it and the more we talked to our audience and the more we realized what people actually wanted what we realized was there was a huge PC audience that really wanted this game uh, and, there, and, and what we also realized and now we get into the, the business of games a little bit if you are a 
modern game studio and you want anybody to know that you exist, you have to be on Twitch. You have to be talking to live streamers. You have to be doing uh, Let's Play videos. You have to. That's your marketing channel now. And to be quite frank, for every one guy that does Let's Play videos uh, or streams uh, iPad games, there's 20 that do Let's Play videos and stream PC games. And so we realized very quickly if we wanted these channels that are very important channels to actually play our games, oh, somebody freaking threw a bunch of people on me? Aw. Um, yeah, if we wanted people to play the game on the on the live streams, etc., then we were better off on PC. Um, that was a, a thing we realized quite quickly. So, yeah, we kind of changed our strategy a little bit. We got a lot more PC-centric, um, which I think was it was good. It was good for us. I think it was a good change. Um, yeah, I'm just sort of talking now. There was a question something. Um, I can't remember what I was answering. I swear I was answering something. Monica, do you remember? Are you even there, Monica? What? <laughs> no, Alara was saying strategy is her least favorite, but she's enjoying it. I well, thanks! I'm excited you'll be streaming the game. That's gonna be awesome. Um, like I tell everybody, uh, let us know the time that you're going to be streaming it. Monica will get it up on our. Uh, uh, we'll we'll make sure that we're hosting you. Um, we'll make sure that we're getting you some some copies to give away to your users and whatnot. Yeah, we can do all that. So, Monica, say hi, Monica. Yep. She's hi. the person to talk to for all of that because she's way more responsive than I am. I tend to get distracted and. Like I say, it's taken me how long to answer this fucking questionnaire from Pac- I mean, That was literally like two weeks that I, she's been on me to answer one stupid questionnaire that somebody sent me. That's how bad I am. Um, so I'm not I'm not the guy to talk to about things she is. But, on the good side, Monica's very available and very nice. You're nice, right? We, we can call yes, you nice. Yes, I'm nice. Yeah, she's nice. I just said you're very available. That's funny. <laughs> um, that sounds wrong. Um, let's see. Um, Yeah, I mean, we're we're trying everything we can do to get more people in the multiplayer lobby. It's better than it used to be. Now, every time I log on, there's five or six people in there. And it used to be you'd log on and there was, like, literally nobody there. Um, and to be honest, Merlini X is usually one of those people. <laughs> um, but we're hoping that when we get more people streaming and we get more people interested, that we can get more people in the... In the, the the multiplayer and, and get, you know, a little bit more interest in the game. I've got some other stuff I can't talk about right now that we're we're going to be doing that hopefully will get us some more people, um, some secret plans uh, for our launch. But we've also got some not-so-secret plans. What else are we doing, Monica? What else are we doing to bring audience? Like you are doing the marathon this week. Oh, that's true. We're doing the marathon. You guys should show up for my marathon. That's going to be cool. I'm playing every campaign level from beginning to end without stopping, without sleeping. That's going to be awesome. Starts Wednesday, 10 p.m. EST. Which is what? That's like 11 p.m. my time, or 11 a.m. my time in Tokyo. No, no, no. EST. So that's Thursday morning for you. All right. So what is it in New York? What, what time is it in New York? 10? Uh, 10 p.m. Wait, New York is east or west? <laughs> Dude! <laughs> you suck, Monica! Um, yeah, New York is on the east coast of America. Okay, so Monica. that's 10 p.m. on Wednesday. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, yeah, 10 p.m. on Wednesday we will get started. Um, and it will be brutal and ugly.
but I don't care. I still feel strong about it. It's going to be fun. And then we're doing a tournament, right? Yep. We need to figure out how to how to pump up our tournament more because it's going to be not real fun if we don't have anyone in the tournament. Yeah, so what we're doing for the tournament, we actually, we kickstarted this game twice, and we failed at our Kickstarter twice. It was really kind of sad and, and ego bashing. Um, seriously, you want to you wanna have your ego just like taken out and kicked in the giblets, then fucking do a Kickstarter, fail it, think that you've learned what you need to know to make a Kickstarter work, do it again, and fail it again in front of all your friends because like when you do a Kickstarter you're like you're messaging all your friends and your family and it's on your Facebook and you're like you put yourself out there for a Kickstarter right and we failed twice and it hurt I mean it fucking it stung like a bitch and so we had these sort of Kickstarter rewards that we were giving away um, that we never got to give away. Like, we were going to let you name kingdoms in the game. We were going to let you, uh, uh, we were actually the, 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 we were going to, we were going to name heroes after people. There was all kinds of cool shit that we were going to let you do. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the hero, we're going to take the awards from the Kickstarter and make those the rewards in the, uh, tournament. And I think, what, what did we decide the, the grand prize award was? We're going to actually put you in the game? That We're going to actually make you a hero? Hero. Yeah, we'll actually make a hero that looks like you, that's named like you, or whoever the hell you want it to look like and be named after. Within reason, you know, you can't, like, make it, like, Dickie McBallface or, you know, something like that. But I don't know why Dickie McBallface was the first thing to pop up in my stream of consciousness. That's not right. Um... If you win the contest, you can absolutely be an undead hero. And if you send us a picture of you, I will get our artists to make an undead version of you. That that thing can happen if you win the competition. That's that's a competition prize that could happen. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. Uh, we're working on putting together a plan for that now. And that's going to be, I think, uh, last week of May, first week of June, something like that. Yeah. Dickie McBallface. That, I'm going to use that somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where, but I'm going to use Dickie McBallface somewhere. That name, that name, that that's a name that needs to be let loose to the world. The world needs more of that name. Dickie McBallface. Um, I feel like everyone else is getting this game better than me. I feel, I feel very... I get very distracted when I talk, and that is part of the problem. I'm I, and I gotta hand it to fucking streamers. I, I used to when I started streaming because I'm I'm not streaming because I want to be a streamer. I'm purely streaming because I want people to give a fuck about my game. Um, I used to watch streamers, and I I wasn't really part of the you know streamer culture. Like I I'm, I'm you know I, it's funny when you start getting into streaming streaming and and knowing who streamers are and stuff. Um, they all like have a language. They like know each other. There, there's a whole culture that I, I'm not part of. God damn it, Ben! <laughs> Why? Why? What did I do to you, Ben? Um, what, what did Ben do? Ben tentaclored my tower. But he didn't it's just tentaclore my tower, right? Because, it, because he wanted to be a dick about it, he private messaged me and said, Hey Chris, remember when you wanted the tentaclore cards to be hard and awesome? And then throws a fucking tentaclore on me. Because he sucks. Um, there is, there is a secret Twitch culture. You, you don't know because you're part of it. You don't know that it exists. It's a millennial thing. I'm not a millennial. I just like using the word millennial. Sounds cool. Makes you sound educated. Like I know like shit about marketing. But anyway, um, I don't, I don't shit about marketing. But, but no. So like when I started, I would, I, I, I wanted to, to like, understand streaming culture. And I, I realized that I. So my journey into understanding streaming culture started at Pack South. I, I wanted to go to Pack South. Uh, 
because I'd never... Actually, I wanted to go to PAX in Seattle, but I couldn't get a ticket to PAX Seattle. I couldn't get a booth at PAX Seattle because they told me I wasn't important enough. Um, and I was like, fuck you. And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, unless you've already been to a PAX, you can't be in PAX Seattle. So I was like, all right, whatever, asshole. Sign me up for PAX South. So I went down to PAX South. Um, and I realized after I had signed up for PAX South that I didn't have anyone going with me. And it was just going to be me alone in a booth all fucking show for like three days. And I kind of freaked out. And I was like, oh, my God, I, I need somebody to sit in the booth with me. I mean, at the very least, to make sure that nobody steals my iPad when I go take a shit, right? So I... I was talking to, you know, I, I put out a message on my Facebook, can anyone come and help? And it turns out that one of my, this is the weirdest relation ever, my parents' neighbor's step cousin was a streamer, um, uh, Jack Wolf Gaming, uh, which is a, you know, a small uh, up and coming, I, I think everyone's up and coming uh, streamer, a not really nice guy, and basically he came down for PAX tickets. Uh, you know, I, I got him, you know, free tickets to come down and I, I paid for the hotel. And I ended up spending all of PAX next to this guy. Um, this, this streamer, really nice guy. And all of these other streamers kept walking up. And they all, like, knew each other. And they would start, like, talking their streamer language to each other about things and... and and it was all completely foreign to me. And I've been making games a really long fucking time. And to know that there was this huge part of the game world that I knew absolutely fuck all about really disturbed me. And by the time PAX South was over, I was like, okay, this is, this is a situation that can't continue. I can't continue to be ignorant about this thing that I don't know that's obviously important. And I, I started reading and stuff, and, and, and I thought, you know, maybe I'd get to know something by reading and whatnot. And I, I talked to Monica about it because, you know, she's young and she knows young people things. She's my link to young people. Um, that sounds dirty. But um, she's where I find my young people. Um, but no, so I, I... But the problem is there's only so much you can learn vicariously. You can't expect somebody else to do all of your learning for you so I realized that the only way that I was really gonna understand the the life of a streamer was to stream and so I said alright fuck it I, I don't care if I have an audience or don't have an audience I'm gonna daily stream every day I'm gonna stream and so this started as you know basically I test the levels every day anyway because we were right in the middle of building a bunch of campaign levels and I was already playing the campaign levels every day with the designers and I thought you know what I'll just get the designers in the live stream with me and we'll go through the levels in the live stream and if anybody watches great if they don't who gives a shit I'm still getting work done because I'm still playing the levels and talking to the designers and it was really good it, it worked out really well it was really nice to play with the designers and and every now and then somebody would show up I mean it's not like I'm any you know huge streamer or anything but you know, a couple people would show up every now and then and and, and just the, the action of having a camera on me made me be really disciplined about what I was doing. I couldn't, like, wander off because I wanted to go get a snack or something. You know, I had to be on the ball for two hours and testing. And it ended up being a really good experience. But, and this is the bit, I'm sorry, that was like a half hour long story to get to this point. But I realized that everything I knew about streamers was complete and utter bullshit. I thought that this was it just it looks so fucking easy when you just watch a streamer stream you think like that asshole's just playing a game and talking that's not hard I I can talk I can play games how is this and I, I was really I'll be honest I was really fucking dismissive of it I was like dude anyone could do that shit and then I did it and oh actually it's pretty fucking stressful to try to talk and play a game at the same time you know like right now where I was in the middle of a turn and I was still talking and I fucked up because I didn't finish my turn on time because I was trying to make a point 
So yeah, yeah, I actually have have learned to have like a lot more respect for streamers, and I see, you know, and the other thing is like to to try to be fucking interesting for two hours, dude. I struggle at a party to be interesting for five fucking minutes, but to to sit with a camera in your face and you know, and I started actually, you know watching other people stream who are good at it and realize that there was such a thing as being a good streamer right like like it occurred to me I, I just thought you know I guess the people who who have a big audience are just lucky you know that, that and and looking at it now obviously I was fucking stupid right obviously my ideas about streaming and my ideas about the world were complete and utter bullshit it's, it's very clear now but at the time, I had just assumed that the, the you know, the PewDiePies of the world, he's not a live streamer, he's a, 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 a let's player, or whatever the fuck you want to call people. I don't know the language. But anyway, the, the point being, I, I had thought that that was just luck. I thought that those people made a lot of money because they were just lucky. And that was just not true. They are actually talented. And that, that was a, and, and because I know there's like four or five people in the stream right now who actually stream. I know right now you're like, you fucking idiot. Of course they're talented. Uh, you, but, but you know, you do this shit. So I didn't know. So yeah, there's that. Well, some of it's luck. Some of game development is luck. I mean, look at the guy who made Flappy Bird, right? Flappy Bird's not a good game. I mean, honestly, objectively, it's not a good game. There's 50 games that were released the same month Flappy Bird came out that were better games than Flappy Bird. Um, but, yeah, that guy made a fuck ton of money because he was lucky. Luck happens. But, you know, there's... If you're going to do something for a long period of time like game development, you don't get to live on luck. You have to actually, you know, contribute. And you have to be good at things. And if you're consistently good at things, then the luck comes, right? That's that's how luck actually works. You can't just like sit around with your thumb up your ass, hoping that you know my lucky day will come. Like it, it won't. The world doesn't. The world does not love you that much. But if you're consistently trying to do something, and and doing it hard, then there is a chance that sooner or later you'll be good at it and you'll have your luck. So, it works like that. Um, yeah, but no, like you say, that there, you know, there was there was a couple times a, a Renegade is, is saying, you know, farther up in the stream, like, uh, wait until you've been streaming for five hours and there's absolutely nobody there. I've done it. I've absolutely done it. Um, now, I actually have the benefit of, I have a company, so I can always force someone like Monica to come and hang out in the stream with me. So I haven't, I haven't had the, it's just me all by myself moment, which has got to be really fucking ego destroying. Like that's got to, that's got to hurt. But the thing is, you can't quit, right? You can't be like, well, there's nobody here, so fuck it, I quit, right? You have to get past the there's nobody here moment and, and power your way through it and that's yeah it's not just streaming that's everything that's game development you know I mean come on I've got a multiplayer lobby right now that's basically this twitch stream um, it would be it would be easy for me to get pissed off right now and say ah oh, fuck it but you don't you don't say you know fuck it I'm out um, you you power through, and that's that's what separates professionals from hobbyists. Whether it's streaming or game development or being a musician, um, you know, one of my one of my favorite musicians and, a, and an absolute role model for me is there's an artist uh, Annie DeFranco. I don't know if you guys are of a generation that knows Annie DeFranco, um, the awesome sort of folk artist. Oh, he's folk, whatever the fuck you want to call Annie DeFranco. And she, I, I read an interview from her once talking about exactly this, that when she was younger, she would go in and she would play um, in a room, you know, she'd play a concert for three people. And it's hard to show up and play in a fucking concert for, for 
three people, but you can't just like walk out and say, well, there's only three people here, so fuck it, I'm putting my guitar away and I'm going home, because then you don't get asked back, right? You don't, you don't get another, that, you know, and, and it's the same with games, the same with everything. When you, I've made games that sold terrible. I've made games that sold absolutely terrible. We recently did a game, oh shit, I probably put, if I, I don't even want to do the math on how much it cost me to build uh, a game we did called Monster Roller. And it was a cool little free-to-play game. It, it had some nice ideas in it. Um, it's not the best game I ever made, but certainly not the worst game I ever made. And uh, at least $100,000 we put into that damn thing. And I think all bills in, it's made three, dollars $4,000 total. It's made absolutely nothing. Um, and again, that's, that's my money, right? That's not like some guy who I work for's money. That's my cash. Um, cash that I could have used to buy a boat or something. I don't own a boat. It'd be nice to own a boat, but I, I don't. And it's like I took that money out in the backyard and put it in a burn barrel and set fire to it. I mean, that's, that's really what it's like. Um, and it would be very easy to get angry and upset and say... Well, fuck it, fuck these gamers, fuck this audience, fuck this industry, I'm out. But you don't you don't get to do that, right? Not if you're a professional. You pick your fucking face up off the floor and, you know, put together the last bits of your shitty pride and go build again. That's right. That's all you can do. Um, so, yeah. Wow, this is really... I feel like I'm giving a little inspirational talk to myself to make myself feel better. <laughs> Are you inspired, Monica? Is anybody inspired? I want somebody to be inspired. Lie to me and tell me you're inspired, Monica. I'm inspired. <laughs> wow, that was... That was, uh... Yeah, thanks for that. Um... Hmm... Hmm. Hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention to my game for a moment. Because <laughs> Ben is coming. Ben is coming. Termite King lives! <laughs> you guys probably don't know this. Uh, yellow in this game is Termite King, and Termite King is actually a beautifully long-haired gentleman in Kuala Lumpur who is the animator, who did a lot of the animations for this game, as well as a good bit of the art. I think he did some of the UI. I don't I don't know what... Ben, Ben's kind of a multi-purpose artist guy, but a lot of the art in this game was actually from Ben, and he's playing yellow right now. Oh, at least Renegade was inspired. Somebody's inspired. I do not... I, I tell you, when an American tells me that they have medical issues, I fucking... The rest of the world does not know. Well, actually, the Philippines knows. The Philippines has shitty me medical system, too, but... Holy shit, do not get me started on the U.S. medical system. It is... It is criminally bad. It is... There should be laws against how bad the American medical system is. Um, there really ought to be laws against it. But I'm not... I'm not gonna get all political right now. But I... I... I feel your pain. That's, uh... I would not wish... Having to deal with medical stuff as an American on my worst enemy. I would not. That is a, that is a terrible, shitty situation. Because, you know, it's on, on top of the fact that, you know, you have medical issues, which is always going to suck, right? But um, the, the system is shit. I remember, I and this is just a, a bullshit little story. It's nothing big, uh, but it's an example. I was in... I got my, my graduate degree at UW up in Seattle, and I was insured through the UW insurance, right? 
God damn it, Ben threw another card. Ben is the king of cards. Um, no, so I was riding my bike. I fell on my bike and I broke my arm, right? Just a little tiny fracture right there. And I went in to the doctor to get my bullshit little arm fixed. And, you know, all they did, they took an x-ray. They told me, yeah, we can't put a cast or anything on that. Probably want to not use it too much. Here's a stupid little $5 splint, or not splint, but a little sling to hang it in. Good luck, right? One x-ray, one doctor. $2,400 that cost me. $2,400 fucking dollars to have a doctor look at an x-ray and tell me, yeah, you probably shouldn't use that too much. Like, that's... Come on, that's fucked up, right? That's that, 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 that should be illegal. There should be laws against that. But there's not. That's, that's totally legit. That's how our system works. But I'm, I, I swear I'm not gonna. I'm gonna stop there. I'm not gonna get political. I get, I get worked up. Um, but I live in Japan now, where we have actual, real, live, socialized medical system that is good. I get really good medical treatment here. It's nice and affordable. So, yeah, that's that's something you don't hear about Japan. Everyone always wants to talk about the, you know, the the sushi and the whatever. You know what I love Japan for? I love Japan for its reasonably priced, highly efficient, effective medical care. That's why I love Japan. Well, that and the sushi. Well, and the tentacle porn. And, well, the fact that I can walk out my door and, like, every girl is hot here. Even my wife, she's like totally hot. Yeah, she'll be here later. She's at the doctor now. I don't know where she's. I don't know. She'll be back later, but she's hot. And in fact, uh, May sixth, which was just a couple days ago, was my sixteenth. Uh, yeah, sixteenth anniversary. Woohoo! I'm old. <laughs> I can't believe that anybody would choose to spend 16 years with me. Can you imagine? Like, that just seems like a really poor life choice to me. Hmm. Why does that not work? Now I have to have a warrior? Aww. Ooh, can I play that there? Yes. Alright, cool. Yeah, 16 years is a long time. I've been in Japan now for... 11? Yeah. Wow. No, 10. 10 years in Japan. This time. I was here before a long time ago, but yeah, this is 10 years in Japan. Woo! A decade in Nihon. So, Monica, mm -hmm. have you ever actually left the Philippines? Yep. Where have you been? Hong Kong. Is that it? Yep. <laughs> You've never been anywhere but Hong Kong? Hong Kong. Just Hong Kong. When was that? Um, two years ago, I think. I wasn't in Booms Up yet. Okay. So since you've been in Booms Up, you've never been... We never brought you to Singapore? Nope. Why did we not do that? You would be useful there. We do conventions and things. Why have you not been to... I don't know. We Ask should... yourself. <laughs> yeah, your manager sucks. We should do something about that. We should get you to... We should get you to Singapore. We should send you instead of me to Singapore. What? You're not going to go? Honestly, I I want to go for this next... There's a convention in Singapore uh, next week that I'm supposed to be at. Um, the thing is, like, I kind of want to focus on shipping this game right now. I got, like, a lot of shit I want to do. We got... I got live streams and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of... I don't know. I'm a... A little part of me wants to... Not go. I mean, I want to go, but I also want to do everything I can do to launch the game better. Ben 
Ben's actually doing pretty good for Ben. Ben usually sucks at this game. I'm kind of impressed. He turtles real hard. Wait, who's he allied with? Is he allied with you, Monica? Yep. Uh. Wow, there's a lot going on. It's very confusing. Hmm. Well, that's a good question. Um, how do we plan to get the word out? Um, well, I'm doing a lot of live streaming. <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's the sort of traditional route, which we always do. You know, we have... Monica does big PR blasts and we send information to uh, various newspapers and online people and we'll give out a bunch of free keys to streamers and to reviewers and things like that to get people to review the game but the the truth is in the in the modern world very few people actually read game journalism that's that's kind of a dying art um, people people want it to be something you know you 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 want that to be something because you're like oh okay we wrote all these look we're in polygon or, or Kotaku or some shit like that but the truth is very few people actually give a fuck about that anymore most game sales anymore are about uh, your ranking on various charts so if you're ranked well on the Steam chart or on the iOS chart, that's going to get you good positioning, uh, or it's going to get you a lot of downloads. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, think about yourself as a gamer. How do you... And I, this is not a rhetorical question. I'd be interested to hear your opinions. How do you find out about new games? Right? How? Because that's, that's the real question, not how do I make people know about my game. The real question is how do gamers these days actually find out about new games? And what I've been realizing is, you know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but what most people are doing right now is they're playing what their friends are playing. It's, it's all very social. It's, you know, I saw somebody, you know, my little Steam notification, somebody's playing a new game that I haven't heard of, or uh, I... Uh, uh, hang on, i got to concentrate on my game for just a second. I have to think. Oh, my wife is back. Um... Maria Terio. Um, let's see. You build me that. You build some of those. Build some of those. I build a whole lot of those. Okay, cool. Um, off we go. You. How's that gonna play out? Pretty good, actually. Um, Why is there a red button in your chat, but there's no number? Uh, that means more than nine things. Um, is that intentional? Yeah, 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 because the number would get really big and it would flow outside of the button. Okay. That's that's pretty standard for chats in other applications. Yeah, so like you say, Renegade, it's alright, so I'm looking at the Steam front page, right? And so what's recommended or new or on sale, right? And that's that thing for Steam is exactly the same for uh uh iPad, it's exactly the same for Google. There's a front page on each one of those. People go and they see what's new, what's recommended. So how do you get recommended? Well, you get recommended by being a relatively good app that's got some uh, press behind it, that's got some people who seem to give a shit, that's got some buzz. So, you know, and, and it's this sort of constant struggle of to get press, you need press, right? Um, how do you how do you get people to care about your game? Well, you show them that other people care about your game. Well, how do you do? You know that that that's the sort of constant chicken egg problem that you run into with with games right now. 
which you know how do I solve that I don't have a great answer you know I don't I don't have like a well my surefire answer is to do blah so my uh, sort of uh, current answer hang on a sec um, what no oh god damn it well, all right then oh, god damn it yeah, so my current answer is we go to places like Twitch and, and see if we can get people involved in Twitch and see if we get people to play the game and, and talk about the game. And, you know, I, I think you can look at this stream and you can see what I'm hoping is going to happen, which is, you know, we build it grassroots, bit by bit. A couple people play the game, a couple people come watch, a couple of those people who watch are also streamers, and those streamers are like, hey, this is pretty cool, I want to stream it too. And, you know, you know, we could try to go to the big, huge streamers, but the, the truth is the big, huge streamers that have, you know, the big, huge channels and everything, they're, they're kind of a business. And they're kind of in the business of uh, playing games that everybody already knows about, to be quite honest. Um, they, they're not really going to support us very much. They're going to wait until we're big, and then they're going to support us. And so my feeling of how to, you know, combat that is let's go to the smaller streamers and support them. And so that's that's exactly, you're seeing me doing that, right? Doing a live stream of my own, showing up to, you know, anybody who's, anybody who's willing to stream our game. We'll send somebody there, whether it's me or Monica or Nelson or MJ. We've got designers and artists that can come hang out in the channels and chat about our game and make sure you've got somebody to play multiplayer with. Uh, we'll give out all the you know codes we can to you know. And, and it was funny when I was at PAX, there were a lot of people who came up and they were like, you know, are you really giving away codes to streamers? And I'm like, hell yeah, I'm giving away codes to streamers. And they were like, yeah, but I'm not a very big streamer. And I'm like, I don't give a shit how big a streamer you are. If you if you try. I'm going to support you, right? And it, it goes back to that whole conversation that we just had a minute ago about, you know, some people, they're out there streaming the five people. And I'm going to support that guy, right? And sooner or later, that guy's going to support me back, right? And if, I, if I'm honest about it and I'm there and I'm trying, then I, I think sooner or later, people are going to get involved in what we're doing and interested in what we're doing. And if it's a guy who's got, a, you know, a little tiny live stream of a, of a couple people, I, I don't care because that guy's trying. That guy's putting some effort in to help me with, with my game. So I'm going to support him however I can. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not just saying that because there are streamers here. I mean, that's, that's actually our game plan. Because uh, I, I got nothing, I got, I got no better ideas. And it's been fun. It's been educational. You know, it's it's actually been nice. You know, I've, I've, you know, before I would only watch streams sort of with the idea of, you know, I'm going to see how people are doing this. And I had a very sort of, I don't know, I guess mercenary approach to going and looking at streamers when I first started. But now I find that, like, when I'm working now, I just always have somebody streaming over in the corner of my screen. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of enjoying it. I'm enjoying getting to... I'm enjoying getting to know what people these days think about games and how they're playing games. I'm enjoying kind of being involved in the culture and feeling like I'm part of the culture. Um, it's it's nice, actually. Um, and no, I'm not trying to butter you up. I, I you know, it's uh, the, you ask the question. This is the honest truth. I don't. I wish that I had a better answer. I wish that I could tell you, you know, we've got this great plan where we've got, you know, I paid you know, ten thousand dollars to this company and they're gonna assure that we have some ranking on the charts or you know, oh we have this big feature with Kotaku that's going to happen or some sh I don't have any of that shit. I don't you know, Monica tries her best. This is Monica's full time job is promoting Boomzap games. And she spends countless hours sending emails to streamers and sending emails to every fucking game blog in the world. Um I don't know, Monica. What what does your day look like? Honestly, what is your you are you he's asking how we're getting our game out. What is your what does your day look like these days? Mm, 
so live stream in the morning and after that I don't know if so different things pop up in the middle of the day when my plan is to send emails oh so wait can... while I was busy doing some shit over here look at look at fucking Alara coming in behind me and taking over my my properties look at that little little backdoor sneak attack while I'm busy talking about shit look at that that's that's shameless that's absolutely shameless I'm not gonna forget this moment this is a day that will live in infamy well, I'm busy taking care of business with Ben here taking care of business <laughs> All right. Damn it. I all distracted with beating up on Ben. It's true. I was here talking about my love for the streaming community and she's all I'm going to attack him from behind when he's not <laughs> looking. Yeah. This is the second time she's fucked me, too. This is this is time too. I don't trust you anymore, person. Where's my camera? You! You! <laughs> I was smart enough not to ally with her this time, though. <laughs> so, the suggestion about being able to predictively move into an allied champion, trusting that they're going to move out of there. Yeah, we actually, I'm in the middle of a conversation with our coder about how to solve that, because you're not the first person to note this problem um, and it's something that pisses me off too so we're looking at that and I think because the the way the AI actually works is the AI doesn't determine its moves until after you've determined all of your moves it does it sort of as a, as a second process um, we we can actually we should be able to do that thing you're talking about where we say alright let's take a look at where you actually moved and let's make sure that the AI doesn't move there I think we we should be able to do that we're working on we're working on that right now um, and hopefully we'll have a solution for that in the next patch um, that's the hope damn it Ben why didn't you build this city at all there's no portal here there's no barracks I take over your city and it's full of crap you suck Ben that was the AI's castle. That was Ben's when I took it. <laughs> Loser. You and I are never going to be friends, Alara. Not, not with you behaving this way. I think actually the way that I'm using Twitch, not not as a as a Twitch streamer, but as a Twitch consumer, I think is actually pretty standard Twitch behavior. I think a lot of people I undervalued how many people just leave this on in the way that like my grandma leaves on television to like keep her company, you know? I think there's a lot of people who, who just sort of have it on in the background while they're doing other stuff so they're playing a they're playing a league game of something and while they're doing that they've got this going on in the background I think there's a lot of that going on um, and I had I had underestimated how much of that was actually taking place you go back there and you go there Is that how I want to play this? Yeah, I'm going to play that right there. Um, yeah, all right. Wait, who didn't move? Who moved everyone? Oh, you. You got to do some shit. Go! Oh! I ran out of time. 
Yeah, and I think that's why I didn't understand it when I first was looking at it, because I, I thought of it as a more, I guess, uh, I didn't realize that everybody was sort of multi-streaming it, right? I, I thought, like, who would just sit and watch somebody play a video game? And then I realized, you know who would watch somebody play a video game? Somebody who's also playing a video game. Like, like there's a, a very sort of different feeling in somebody who's who's watching a video game and playing a video game and you know there's 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 sort of a there's something else going on there all right let's see let's go there let's you build that up um, you know what fuck you I stand my ground What the hell are you then? What are all these rogues? Alright, cool. Who's purple? Marlini X, alright. Ah! Oh, I was in the lead and Alara just took it from me! Ah! Oh. The bitter shame. Oh, that stung. That's all right. I don't have to, don't have to tolerate this. done a poor oh I've made a poor life decision Ooh, I've made two poor life decisions on the same turn oh yeah this is gonna hurt oh this is also gonna hurt oh my god that's a lot of phoenixes oh that's a metric shit ton of phoenixes Yeah, I, I think the Merlini X Alara combination <laughs> has has proven its its strength. Yeah, they beat me. Um Yeah, I'm I'm a little concerned here. Oh, bad things are happening. Bad things. You know what? Screw you, I'm standing my ground. Oh wait! Finally, being a rogue works for you. Alright, cool. Ah, oh, to the death! Ah! Oh. Alara's in it for good! She means it! See, I think Merlini X and Alara are actually in the same room. So we have undervalued their ability to coordinate <laughs> their attacks. See, they're the opposite of us. We gotta talk like publicly here on Skype. Everyone knows what we're up to. They can see my moves. <laughs>
if see, they are in the same room. <laughs> see, I, I think at some level that's cheating. <laughs> I would argue that's cheating. <laughs> but that's alright, that's alright. I, I take the challenge. Oh wait. You're going to lose your castle, Chris. I'm not losing my castle. Life's good. I have all kinds of options open to me. She's underestimated the value of my 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 portals. All right, there we go. Now we're talking. There, that's that's a little more like it. That's that's a little more like that fight should have gone. All right, you back up. <laughs> Are you out, Monica? Yep. Oh shit! So it's it's wait wait Ben. They were. Ben. <laughs> they were both in my kingdom, Alara and Merlini. All right, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> the, I'll team up with what's left of Ben. <laughs> hmm. All right, come in, save the day, Ben. You can do it. You can do it. Alright, go get them, my mini dragons. Go, mini dragons! Ah, uh, This is like the epic battle here in Black Thistle. The, the <laughs> Battle of Thistle Vale. See, it sounds so nerdy when you say it out loud. All these names are so nerdy. I'm an enormous nerd. This has become a relatively epic battle. I still think I'm going to lose, but but I feel good about myself because I was the one without it, without a an ally, right? So it was me versus world in this game, and I'm still I'm still in there. <laughs> I can stream and not have an ally and fight. What are you doing on my portal? Get off my portal. I think I shouldn't have picked this as a starting point. Like, it's open to all three enemies. <laughs> Probably not the strongest move. Um. Hmm. Especially since two of them are allied. <laughs> Out of gold? I'll say it isn't so. Hmm. Things are looking a little bit more bleak. I don't know, Ben. <laughs> My hopes are, are drawing low. Ah! 
My dragons, they didn't, they didn't. Oh, I'm gonna lose my castle over there. Oh, that sucks. That's all right. It's all right. We'll we'll come back from this. It's just a it's a training year. Um. Oh, uh, what do I do? Oh, out of gold again. Hmm. I found a drop harpy. Oh, the one that goes in circles? Yeah. Yeah, we gotta do something about that. That looks kind of lame. Oh, a well-timed circle of protection. Hmm. See, now he's got the portal, and he's got, has he got, he's, yeah, he's got his hero on his city there. All right, Ben, you go take that portal. Because I can't, because he's going to bring, like, God's own army with that portal, is what's going to happen. You're going to lose. Why you got to be so negative? <laughs> Why can't you be more supportive? Why are they so strong? <laughs> Because they're good at games. <laughs> if they say what you will about live streamers, the thing they're good at is games. Right? <laughs> You're gonna bring a bunch of, of of live streamers into your game. You have to expect them to not suck very much. But where are you going? What? Chris, do it. Do what? If I say it, they'll hear it. Wait, I'm, I'm desperately looking for the thing you want me to do. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I hit chat. All right, yeah, I, 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 I get it. I get it. No, you didn't do it. No, I figured out what he was doing. No, I didn't. I was wrong. You were wrong. If you went there, he wouldn't be able to use it. Well, he's going to be trapped in that battle for a little bit. I've got time. I can wander up there. I don't think he's got anyone... Yeah, he doesn't have anyone that can portal in anytime soon. No, I'm talking about the other side. Like... Ah. What? He could have gone after Purple in the North Portal. So that he would not go after Ben. Then Ben could go to his castle. Mm, I'm not sure that strategy would have worked. Why? Ben has four heroes. Yeah, but I don't think he's got anybody on those four heroes. But you're going to distract him. He will just die. No, but... Ah. <laughs> There's obviously some plan that you're very upset that I don't understand. And I feel for you, but I don't know. I don't get it. Ben could have occupied the castle in Broadaxe Isle. But I wouldn't have done much. But you, you could have lowered his population limit. Well, that's true. Ben shouldn't have brought all four heroes. He should have, he should have gimped one of his heroes and left his hero behind to come and support. I think he thought you were going to go there. I think he did. I think I think in the long run, you guys are right and I'm wrong. And now I he's. I PM'd you both. Yeah, <laughs> I. 
I think it's looking very... Oh, wait! Did we turn off victory points in this game? Yep. Oh, this is gonna be an epic long game then. We still got... <laughs> 20 more turns to go. Although, I, I think that we're gonna get our asses kicked long before 20 turns is what I think. Here. Well, that's true. He he still sucks worse than me. That is that I can always feel good about that. Um yeah, you go there. Boom. So, so Chris, what is your creative process like? <laughs> are we back? To, are we back to that? Um, I'm not doing anything anymore. That's true. That's true. What is my creative process like? Where do you begin? Honest truth, I find somebody else's shit and find something that I don't like about it, and then think like, what if I did this without the part that I don't like? I mean, it's it. You're not supposed to say that. I think I think I'm supposed to be way more creative than that. I think I'm not supposed to say out loud that I rip people off like <laughs> that. But, but that really is it. I mean, basically, you know, I'll play some game and I'll say like, I love this game and I love everything about it, but I don't. I think I could do this part of it better. And almost everything I do starts from sort of that mental space, which. I don't know. Maybe a maybe a better human being would be like, oh, I you know I smoke a bowl of dope and I have these amazing visions of <laughs> things that have never created before and I create them completely from scratch. But I don't actually think most of the world works like that. I think the vast majority of creative endeavor works pretty much like I just explained. You know, uh, somebody says. I, I love strategy games, but I don't like this part about strategy games, so I'm going to change that part. I think that's a very standard way of, of developing things. Um, but a lot of it also comes from, I mean, this game's a good example. It comes from sort of a creative loop of playing it, because it's not just finding someone else's stuff and saying, I don't like this thing about it. It's also looking at your own stuff and saying, yeah, this is really fun, but this and this and this is bad. You know, like like I was talking about with uh with uh the trading game that we canceled. You know, it had some good stuff in it. I liked I liked some of what we had going on in it, but I didn't like the the fact you couldn't fight anybody. And I thought that was just boring. And I had thought that that was going to be a good idea, and it wasn't. And so I took one of my own ideas and said, "All right, well let's let's." sort of redevelop that and see if we can come up with something better. So it's not always somebody else's idea I'm ripping off. Sometimes I'm ripping myself off. Alright, Ben. I think we gotta call it. <laughs> I think this is over. Um... I'm, you know what? I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I've never actually seen anyone win by conquering. I'm gonna... I'm gonna let that happen just to see what that looks like. All right, next question, Monica. Hmm. Where do you find the most inspiration for your designs? What was the most interesting thing inspiration from? I spend a lot of time looking at old games. I spend a lot of, you know, I tell everybody, you know, I make a big deal of the fact that I've been making games a long time. I think anyone who's talked to me for more than five minutes has heard me talk about that. But the honest truth about that is that's largely useless experience. I mean, I would like to think that that experience got me all of this, you know, wonderful whatever, but the, the, the truth is most of what I know about games is no longer relevant. You know, I mean, the, the first game I made is shipped on floppy disks, you know. Some of the games I made, we didn't even have internet yet, so a lot of the, the stuff that, that I know um, it's not relevant 
But I do think there is value to the fact that I have played a metric shit ton of games. And games that people now don't think about or don't play anymore. You know, I mean, I was a big Ultima Online player. I don't think anyone in this chat ever played a minute of Ultima Online. You guys are too young for that. Um, I played Ultima 1 and Ultima 2 and Ultima 3. I played all those old Ultima games. I played Privateer and, and Wing Commander and uh, Zork, you know. And so I, I, I think a lot of my inspiration comes from those older games because that's that's what I grew up playing. And and to be quite honest, I I was before I was a computer gamer, I was a big board gamer and a big role playing gamer. So I I spent a lot more time playing Dungeons and Dragons and Axis and Allies and you know uh, diplomacy than I ever spent playing video games. So yeah, I think I, I get a lot of my thinking about games from from that sort of older thing, and I, I think it shows in this game. I mean, it, it's this when when we when we built Calasia, I wanted it to be. I wanted it to sort of respect that older gamer tradition. I wanted the maps to look like old D&D maps. I wanted the, I wanted orcs and elves and, and things like that in the game that are the sort of traditional fantasy tropes. Oh my god, look how surrounded I am. <laughs> I could not be more surrounded right now. Where, where's Ben? Ben is uh, Ben's uh, no, smoking dope castle. or something. Oh, no. He's useless. He doesn't have a castle anymore. And he has yeah, Ben is more. Ben is out. There's, there's there's this is over in a couple more turns. But you know what? I'm gonna play all my bumper crops just so I go out rich. <laughs> <laughs> when I die, I'm gonna die rich. <laughs> That's my plan. <laughs> bumper crops everywhere. All right, and a merchant caravan too. Why can't I play my merchant caravan? Why can't I play Safety? that? Safety. Oh, because my merchant's dead. Because <laughs> everyone's dead. Wait, you, defend. Defend to the last. Wait, is there anyone you can attack that you got a chance? You know what? Screw it. All right. All right, what's your next question, Monica, while we're still here, uh, before the game is over? Oh, no, I answered the next question. Good. And the next one is, what is the most challenging part of game development? What is the most rewarding part? Uh, the most challenging part right now is financing, by far. Uh, getting everybody paid is really difficult right now. It's a very difficult business environment for game development. It's very difficult to get teams paid. It's very difficult to find people who are actually publishing games. Um, oh, I like that you didn't attack. Just let me sit here and defend and live to make me feel bad about myself. That's just mean. <laughs> um, the most rewarding part? I get to make games. I mean, I, that seems very... I mean, how do you get better than the fact that you fucking make games? I, I make fucking entertainment for a living. I mean, how's that not cool? Like, what... That's like, what's the best part about blowjobs and pizza? Well, blowjobs and pizza, right? I mean, like, with, you know, if I, can, I make games for a living. That's... The, 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 yeah, I don't... You, you don't have to improve on that. There's not, like, a, a good part of that. that. That thing in itself is fucking awesome. Don't know why I came up with blowjobs and pizza as the thing that's good in this world. I think I've, 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 I've said too much. Um, I'm just going to run away. Mm. I'm going to play a stealth card, which is totally useless, because everybody can just go look at the Twitch and see where I am. <laughs> I can't see his hero. Look at the live stream. It tells all. <laughs> oh no, Ben is surrounded. <laughs> We're all surrounded. It's all over. Nope, I'm gonna make him chase me. Alright, any more questions? We're running out of time. I've only got like two more turns before I'm dead. Oh, how did you catch me? I should have moved. How did your 45 catch my 34? I feel cheated! Come on, survive one turn. Alright, what's the next question, Monica? I got one more turn. Before I'm dead. What? 
What methods do you use to handle creative blocks? Do they occur frequently? No, I don't have creative blocks. Um, game developers don't have creative blocks. It doesn't work like that. Game developers have way more ideas than we have time to make them. You know, people who, who have... You know, like you're writing a book or writing music or something. The time between having the idea and, you know, being able to implement it is pretty quick. When you're making games, the time between having an idea and the time you can actually realize that idea... Um, it takes so long that I've got way more ideas than I could ever hope to make. The, the idea that, you know, it's a funny thing. People are always like, I have this great idea for a game, but I don't want to tell you because I don't want to steal it. But oh, fuck you. I got 500 ideas for games, but you know what? I can make them at about a speed of one every eight months at the fastest. So, you know what? Your idea for a game is worthless to me. I've got 20 that are better that are just sitting and waiting in line to be made. And that's not because I'm a genius or anything. Every game developer will tell you the exact same thing. Any game designer's got more... I've got 500 more game designs in my head than I'll ever make in this lifetime. And that's that's true for every game developer. Oh, that's me out. Oh, Ben is still alive, though. You go, Ben. You go. Hang in there. Hang in there, Skippy. <laughs> All right, let me, let me, let me go to, to... We'll go... We'll go watch him... <laughs> try to try to last. Yeah. No, and then then Alara and we see it. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see if they let their their uh, alliance live, or if one of them backstabs the other. My money is on Alara backstabbing somebody. All right. See there, that thing. This is language I don't understand. What the fuck does "how dank are your memes" even mean? What is that? I don't even know what that... I know what a meme is. That, that I got. But, like... Did, okay, you're young, Monica. Does how dank are your memes... Does that sentence parse for you? Uh, dank is an adjective. <laughs> well I, done! I, I'm assuming it like how dope or something. How dope are your memes? Or dark, I don't know. See, I wouldn't know how to answer that. If we replaced dank with dope, I would not know how to answer that because I don't know how or dope my cool memes are. Or something. See, this is this is what I'm saying. I, you, I can't be taught this by an outside observer. I have to slowly absorb the live stream culture day by day. It's a long journey, but the first step and some other shit like that. Yeah. Look at Ben with a ceasefire card running away. Go, Ben. Go, Ben. You're totally trapped, dude. It's over. There's ten people there. You would have been better off staying and fighting. <laughs> Alright, are there more questions, Monica? Ah, uh, wait. While we watch the end of Ben. What was a painful experience have you found a way out of? How did you do it? I hate those questions. I'm not going to answer that one. Just delete it. Okay. What has been your proudest moment during your career so far? What led to this moment happening? You know, I didn't think it at the time. Um, yeah, actually, uh, uh, that we should make continuous spectator button, that's on the list of shit that will hopefully be in the end of the week. That's something I want as well. Quitting out and then reconnecting sucks. I'm totally with you on that. Um, no, so like I didn't expect it at the time. We had a thing happen about two years ago in the studio uh, where three very senior members of the, the company uh, left and started their own game company. And Alara wins it. Well, Alara and Merlini the, X, the, the, one of them should have, have backstabbed the other. It would, have been a, it would have been a more fun watch to see the hey, backstabbing. Chris, did your game crash? No. Mine did. No, mine's, mine's fine. And I was in spectator mode, so... I was in spectator mode, too. You were or weren't? I was. I Mine, mine, mine was good. I don't know. Good game, guys. Um, that was much fun. I'm not going to start another game. I'm going to finish answering this question, and then I'm going to call it on this live stream because i got to get some work done. Specifically, and I'll mention the work that I'm doing today, we had a bunch of people say that they were pissed off because 
they were starting the game and they had to finish a bunch of campaign levels to get the campaign levels open so that they could play them in multiplayer and they wanted to have the multiplayer directly open to them. So we are going to change that in the next, on Friday when we put out the next release, that's going to be changed. I'm going to actually set it so all the levels are available as soon as you finish the tutorial. But what we're also going to be doing is I am adding in seven player and eight player mode and we are actually going to be building a bunch of eight player levels. So that's actually what I'm doing today is I'm working on brand new eight player levels that we will be adding to the game. Um, oh yeah, that's right, you guys are on East Coast. It's like bedtime there. So back to your question, Monica. So three years ago we had, two or three years ago, we had uh, three senior members of the team leave to go start their own company. And at the time, I guess I was a little pissed off and I was like, um, you know, ah, what did I fail? Why did they leave? But over time, I kind of realized that uh, that that was a dream that they always had to run their own studio, and that was a dream that they could never, by definition, achieve here at my studio because this is my studio. They can't run my studio. This is mine. And so, to achieve the dream of running their own game studio, they had to go start their own game studio, and they had to leave. And I've been watching them, you know, develop their company and a lot of their processes, uh, to be quite honest, are developed from the processes that we had here at BoomZap. You know, they do a lot of virtual studio work like we do. And it's, it's been really interesting to watch people who, you know, and I, I won't say I, I trained them. I mean, I, I, was in, I was influential in their, their training in games, but obviously they had experiences from other places too. Um, but it's been really, for me, fascinating to watch them build their own company and go their own direction. And I, over time, I realized that that's, that's kind of how, you know, that's how you live past your own company or live past your own career in games, is to help people start their own companies, to help people move on and to start their own thing. They're younger than me, and they've, they've got their own thing going, and it seems to be going well. So uh, the company, by the way, is, uh, uh, I always want to call it Alpaca because they're, they're, mascot is a alpaca but they're actually called altitude games and they're a filipino studio the everyone in the studio is philippine and or filipino and they they most of them live in manila it's, an, it's a good group of people and they've got some good games so yeah there's the answer to that question um i'm not going to do any more questions because i don't want to just bore you because i'm not playing a game anymore um that's it for the live stream today we will be back tomorrow I'm hoping very soon we will have some uh, new maps to play, but we won't be able to play eight player maps until Friday because that's when we'll actually be updating the build Friday night, our time, uh, which will have all the code in for eight player maps, etc. So this was huge. Thanks everybody for coming. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. That's it. I always don't know what to do at the, at the end of these. Like I always feel really uncomfortable. And the worst is, like, my OBS is over here on this screen and the camera's there. So every switch ends with me being like, let me look over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it over here. So now OBS is here. And now I can press the stop stream. I should have set a hotkey. I think they have hotkeys for that. But I'm... anyway, bye-bye.